My name is Seema Iyer, and I oversee the Baltimore Neighborhood Indicators Alliance at the University of Baltimore. For more than 20 years, the Venia Project has been collecting, analyzing, and disseminating community-based indicators for all neighborhoods in Baltimore. We like to say that we have a veritable stethoscope that takes the pulse of the quality of life for everyone who lives, works, and plays in our neighborhoods. Over the past decade, we can point to some amazing progress. Teen birth rates are a quarter of what they were. Elevated blood lead levels are also a fraction of what they once were here in Baltimore. None of this progress would have happened overnight, but they show when we set our mind to something, we can do it. Even though we issue more than 100 different indicators every year, such as median sales price of homes or number of children in the school system or number of 311 calls we call for trash, the most important indicator we can provide to neighborhoods is whether or not people are moving in or people are moving out. This is such an important bit of information because once you know this, it impacts so many other things that a community might care about. If a neighborhood is growing, there are pressures related to growth, such as congestion, rising housing prices, or fear of displacement. If a neighborhood is not seeing people moving in, the community will experience a completely different set of challenges, such as vacant and abandoned buildings, or loss of grocery stores, or schools closing. So when the 2020 census data was released last August, we knew that we needed to help communities understand whether or not their neighborhood had experienced population growth or population loss. We found that overall, the city of Baltimore lost 5.7% of its population between 2010 and 2020. And that is the seventh decade in a row that our city has continued to lose population, which means fewer resources, less political representation, and the mental stress of having to take care of the same amount of infrastructure with fewer and fewer people. It used to be that Baltimore wasn't alone in terms of urban population loss. All cities along the East Coast had been losing population, so Baltimore was in the company of all of our sister cities between Washington and Boston. But the 2020 census revealed that no other city on the East Coast experienced any loss at all, but rather saw more than 5 to 10 percent population increase, including Philadelphia, Newark, New Jersey, Providence, Rhode Island. What do these cities have that we don't have? The population decline did not occur evenly throughout the city. Southwest Baltimore lost 26% of its population, while South Baltimore, right next door, grew by 22%. This kind of divergence has endured in Baltimore for many years, and none of us in any neighborhood can afford, not ethically, not psychologically, not financially, for our neighborhoods to keep pulling apart this way in terms of economic, cultural, social fortunes. So we created the Baltimore Community Change Project as a way to harness all the data that we've amassed over the past decade to help us all understand why our neighborhoods are diverging this way. We created six reports that cover a range of issues impacting communities, such as racial disparities, housing affordability, building occupancy, transportation accessibility, community connectedness, and overall quality of life. Each one of the reports shows how communities have changed and how some of our policies might be impacting different neighborhoods differently. But perhaps the most important finding from the research is that communities actually have a lot in common with each other. And we need to find ways where communities can come together, build coalitions around shared experiences. Like Southern Park Heights in the Northwest saw a rise in the number of residents with an Enoch Pratt Free Library membership. But so did Canton in the Southwest. How can both of these communities advocate for, together for more access to the kind of resources that the library has to offer? Or Bella Edison in the Northeast and Edmondson Village in the Southwest had some of the highest rates of home ownership in 2010, but both saw a 13% decline by 2020. How can these neighborhoods band together to stabilize home ownership rates in their neighborhoods? This is the purpose of the Baltimore Community Change Project and why we are hosting a series of events throughout March to bring communities together to learn more about the research and how they can find solutions together to stop population loss in Baltimore and eliminate disparities among our neighborhoods. We can do this. Visit our website at www.bniajfi.org and the hashtag is Be More Community Change. <laughs>